Disclaimer, we do not claim the outcome of this fictional fight to be factual. Any battle can end with any outcome, depending on the circumstances. We are simply choosing the most likely outcome and the one that will fit the most circumstances. So be kind in the comments and remember that we love you. Enjoy the video. Fictional fight rules! No prep time. No outside help unless it is a major part in a character, like Pikachu and Ash, Jack and Daxter, or Gara and his mother Sam. Non-canon events will be included as long as they are not contradicted by the main canon. Solids and liquids can be used in many ways. Solids for building shelter. Solids are also good weapons for beating someone to death. Many liquids can make refreshing beverages. Or it could be used to drown your enemies, watching them struggle as they desperately grasp for air while their lungs fill to the brim. What's wrong with you? Queen Elsa, mistress of solid water, and Katara, the mistress of liquid water. Which one of these watery women will win in a battle to the death? This is Fictional Fights. Hey, that's my line! Queen Elsa of Arendelle, what more needs to be said? She's a cool lady with ice powers. Oh dear, this episode's gonna be full of your stupid ice puns, isn't it? Anyways, Elsa wasn't always the powerful queen as you know her today. In fact, she spent her whole life living in fear of her powers, afraid that she would hurt someone she loved. And because of her bad parenting, she spent her whole childhood locked in a room until the day she was crowned queen and her powers were exposed to the public. Don't know why she ran though, she could just destroy anyone who tries to stop her. To the common man, Elsa's powers may seem generic. Oh, it's ice! She can freeze things, la la la! But, there's actually a lot more to it. Since these are magical powers and not superpowers, her ice has some interesting properties that we'll get to in a moment. But before that, here's a quick rundown of the fancy things the Queen can do. She can, of course, create and thaw ice at will as well as snow. She can make the floor slippery, use it as a shield, and create life? Um, I think so? Yeah, Frozen's mess of a script kinda glances over that one. This is where the interesting properties come in. With her powers, Elsa is able to bring life to merchandise. I, I mean, a little snowman by the name of Olaf. Or she could create the incredibly more useful snow beast known as... Marshmallow. Wow. What a threatening name. Creating life isn't the only strange variant of her ice abilities. Directly striking someone with it can cause weird effects. A direct hit to the eyes can put a victim to sleep, and a clean strike to the heart can freeze the victim from inside out over a course of a day. It's a fancy one-hit kill. Ooh, now that's dark. Finally some edge. And the only way to cure it is an act of true love. Oh, come on. This is cornier than my puns. Don't be such a baby. Just because it's corny doesn't mean it isn't awesome. After all, Elsa was able to create a mountain-sized ice castle in a matter of seconds. I guess so. After all, she did turn her entire country into a blizzard wasteland after only a few days. And that was during the summertime too. Her ice allows her to walk and run on water too, freezing the section she steps on almost instantly. She was also able to- Her powers are even emotion related, like Super Princess Peach or something. When she's calm or at peace, Elsa's ice seems more controlled, but anger or fear can cause her ice to be more frantic and destructive. She doesn't seem to have any weaknesses either, despite the fact that she's a bit of a glass cannon. She may have a powerful output, but she still is a human being, and can be harmed by anything that would hurt a normal person. She even got knocked out by tripping. I don't think even normal people are that weak. However, Elsa did display almost near mastery of her ice powers as a child before the incident where she struck Anna. So now that she has better control over her powers, defending her human weaknesses shouldn't be too hard. Let's take a look at Katara and see if she'd be capable of exposing that weakness. The cold never bothered me anyway. Born in the Southern Water Tribe, Katara was the only waterbender left after the Fire Nation raided them. Even though she had her abilities her whole life, 
She had trouble using them without someone to teach her. That is, until she met the Avatar Aang, and together with her brother Sokka, they traveled around the world, including the Northern Water Tribe. Then she learned how to use her waterbending for medicine and healing. But of course, she was like, Wah, women's rights, I want to fight too, wah, wah. Luckily, she was granted her request, and learned how to use waterbending for combat. She would then go on to help the Avatar save the world. As a waterbender, Katara can manipulate water at will, and even create it from the oxygen in the air. She can freeze it, thaw it, and make weird water arms! In fact, Katara's waterbending is so precise that she can even swim in ice by just thawing the water around her. And she was able to do this with only a year's worth of experience after her waterbending training. And despite the fact she wanted to learn how to use waterbending for combat, she still picked up on the healing aspect of it. She can heal burns and wounds, depending on how severe, of course. <laughs> hey Hira, maybe you should learn waterbending too. Oh? And why is that? Because it's the only way you can get a girl wet! <laughs> Well, it'd certainly be a better method than trying to show off to a bunch of girls at the zoo by thinking that you could lift one of the elephants. No, 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 no. You wouldn't dare. They must have gotten real wet from seeing you be the elephant's toilet. Oh, you dared? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, right. Katar's bending gets even more insane on the night of a full moon. <laughs> I'll give you a full moon. <laughs> Her power increases and she gains the ability to bloodbend. She can control every muscle and every vein in the human body. Uh, but since she's a big softie, she resigned from using this technique after almost being completely consumed by the lust for revenge. Even without the deadly bloodbending, Katara is still useful in combat. She's helped the Avatar in several fights and was even able to raid a Fire Nation ship with only Zuko by her side. The full moon allows her to make the pressure in her water so dense that it can bust open lock steel doors. She's able to manipulate water that's being bended by someone else. She was able to heal a wound caused by a lightning strike and even managed to dodge lightning herself. After doing that, she was even able to defeat Zuko's insane sister, Azula. And she's done all this despite only having years worth of experience. She's certainly one impressive waterbender. Let's see if her waterbending can stand up to Elsa's ice. It's time for a fictional fight! The battle takes place in the Southern Water Tribe. The tribe's folk are freaked out as the ice and snow begins to move. Katara goes to see who's causing all the ruckus, and it's Elsa building a new ice castle. Katara has to protect her tribe, so she creates a massive wave of water pointed right at Elsa. Elsa freezes it and sends it right back at Katara who dodges it. Katara gets a few cuts and scratches from the shards of ice, but for the most part she dodged the deadly attack. Elsa quickly conjures up three giant snow beasts who charge at Katara. She covers her arms with large tentacles of water and destroys the snowmen. Elsa's vision is soon blocked by the snow that goes flying after Katara's retaliation. By the time Elsa regains her vision, it's too late. Katara leapt out of the snow and struck Elsa down with one of her water arms. Katara stands proud over her supposedly defeated opponent. Then suddenly, out of desperation, Elsa fires one last shot. Katara's eyes widen as she leans back as far as she can, just narrowly avoiding the attack. Katara then quickly counters by flinging Elsa into the frozen water by using the snow under her. Elsa quickly recovers and swims towards the surface, only to be sent back down to the bottom of the ocean by Katara who froze Elsa in a block of ice. They say she remains there at the bottom of that ocean to this very day. The winner is Katara. Well, that one was pretty obvious if you think about it. How so? I was too busy plotting my revenge since you let out my elephant story. Well, for starters, there's Katara's technique. While Elsa may have many more years of experience than Katara, that experience was only used in combat once. Well, she could make snow minions to help her out, right? How would Katara get through that? Magic has been shown to be the only thing that can affect Elsa's ice. But even though Katara may not be able to manipulate Elsa's magic ice, she's been outnumbered before. So taking out Elsa's snowmen would be easy, right? They aren't just made of snow after all. Correct. And while Elsa's eyes may be fast enough to stop a speeding arrow, Katara can react to lightning, which is clearly much faster. And any injuries she gets could be easily healed. 
Even if Elsa managed to deliver a clean strike to Katara's heart, Katara would still have an entire day to fight back and finish off Elsa. Which also wouldn't be hard considering Elsa's defenses are equal to a regular human. And after the fight, she could just go see Yang for that act of true love to remove Elsa's frozen heart spell. Any Frozen fans who are angry at the outcome will just have to let it go. The winner is... Katara. Get ready for the next-